Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Matt and I'm a junior doctor working in London and today I'll be talking to you guys about what you need to consider and how you apply for your foundation job as a final year medical student. This is a fairly big decision because it essentially determines the next two years of your life. There are a few things to think about so I hope you find this useful. Foundation schools are essentially hospitals and trusts grouped together by a geographical location that will oversee a foundation program training. They will facilitate the training of junior doctors and there are 20 in total and 15 academic foundation schools. I won't go into too much detail about how it fits into the overall program, but if you wanted to find out more, you can always watch my previous video about the UKFP, which I'll link somewhere here. Before I begin, I just want to say that no matter where you go and which foundation school you get into, your training is still going to be amazing and you're still going to learn so much. Foundation training is fairly standardized by the GMC, which means that no matter where you go, there's still the same number of competencies and the same number of things that you have to do to become a competent junior doctor. Don't worry if you don't get your first choice rotation or hospital because you're still going to have a great time, not to mention that basically being a junior doctor is the same anywhere. When it comes to picking your foundation school, I think there are a few things to consider, but I would say it's probably a a bit more personal of a decision than say picking your foundation rotations. Generally all the foundation schools have a good mix of big and small hospitals, they cover a wide geographical location and they'll cover a wide range of specialties. So it's really important to find out what's important to you. I think that in this decision the location is probably one of the most important factors just because the geographical variation, the UK, Wales and Scotland is quite large. But otherwise other things to consider are things like cost of living, family, proximity to London, going somewhere new weather, applying where your friends are, socials, training opportunities, networking opportunities, your overall EPM score, and also particular factors such as whether you want to be in a specific area, job, or hospital. Those are probably the most important ones that I can think of, but obviously everyone has different priorities. So I would really urge you to sit down and have a think about what you think is the most important to you in the next two years. And hopefully this will give you an idea of how far you want to venture, where roughly you want to be, and how busy of a city you want to be in. Personally, I chose South Thames because I firstly knew I wanted to be in London, and secondly, because I wanted my first year to be in a small hospital and my second year to be in a larger hospital. It worked out quite nicely and I also come from a busier city in Hong Kong so it feels more natural and more comfortable to be here in the hustle and bustle of London. Obviously different deaneries have different levels of competition and the EPM cutoffs vary every single year between each deanery. In general, London has the more competitive foundation schools and the ones that have seen quite a large variation are Severn, Wessex and South Thames and Oxford. Otherwise, the other foundation schools aren't too different in themselves, so I would recommend having a look at your estimated EPM score and seeing where that fits in with the cutoffs of each foundation school from the previous year. There's a really handy calculator, which I'll link in the description down below, made by a guy called Jay Choi. Thank you, Jeremy, for letting us use this and mentioning this, which essentially lets you add up your EPM score and calculates the probabilities of you getting into each individual deanery according to last year's results. I only came across it recently, but it looks like a really handy calculator, and I would recommend just having a look at it just to see where you sit among the cutoffs. It gives you a really nice table of the 2019 cutoffs as well, which you may want to refer to when you're thinking about where to apply. So let's talk strategy. I would say that there's a certain amount of strategy that is to be had with applying to the foundation school programs. Obviously, getting into your foundation school requires you to have a certain EPM score, but you have to factor in mind that the allocation of your foundation's jobs are also based on your decile within the foundation school itself. So you will be ranked among everyone else that's gotten into your foundation school from the cutoff. The highest ranked foundation applicant will receive their first choice job rotation and they'll move down the list and so on. If you're gunning for a specific foundation school or a hospital, I would really recommend going onto their specific website and looking at the cutoffs for certain hospitals, jobs, and also rotations. Personally, I would say that it's better to get into your second choice deanery with a mid-range decile than get into your first choice deanery just scraping the bottom. This is because when you're picking your foundation rotations, it'll be easier to land the jobs that you want if you're mid-range versus if you're at the bottom decile, you'll get the jobs that are left over. And even though you're in that foundation school, you might not be in the area or be doing what you really want to be doing in your foundation years. And some foundation schools are huge. So you really need to be smart, do your due diligence and figure out what exactly realistically you can get into. I'll talk about my situation for example. I knew I wanted to be in London so I looked at all my options. I might have been able to scrape into North Central and East London or North West London but depending on my SJT results I might have ranked near the bottom decile and then not have gotten my jobs that I wanted to do. But I went for South Thames so I could be sure that I could get the jobs that I wanted. Just a few top tips from me. Actually you know what? Not from me. Eh, you can see him waving. Oh. Vibin.
I need to give him a name. He's, he's been here for a while. He's, he's a keeper. Orange Cat's top three tips. Number one is that it's okay to take an average SJT score when you're calculating your overall estimated EPM score. However, I would say when you're considering your range, I would do plus or minus two points. The SJT is such an unpredictable exam and in a very pessimistic way, but only because I don't want you to get caught out. You need to factor in the possibility of what happens when you score two to three points lower. Obviously, if you score two to three points higher, that's great, but the converse might happen. This might be significant in certain situations. For example, if you think that you're comfortably in a mid-range decile for a foundation school, but then you happen to have an off day and you score two points lower than the average, and suddenly you find yourself in the bottom decile of your foundation school, obviously that's not going to be ideal for picking your foundation job rotation and maybe when you were picking your foundation schools you were 50 50 about one and the other which had a slightly lower requirement so it might just be worth thinking about whether you want to put that lower death cell cut off foundation school above that first obviously don't shift your foundation school choices massively around this most people end up doing just fine anyways but just bear in mind the possibility number two I would really recommend having a look at the specific details on the foundation school website that you're looking for every year they release statistical information about the cutoffs for certain hospitals the deanery itself and the decile cutoffs as well. It's quite useful when you're planning your application process and thinking about where exactly you want to go within the school and more information is always better than less so it's just worth doing your research. Finally, don't forget that even though you've locked in your foundation school rankings, you can keep changing them up until after you finish your SJT. I think right up until the results come in so you have plenty of time to choose and think about where you want to go and the order that you want to have it in. So guys, obviously picking your foundation school is a huge decision, but don't worry and honestly don't stress because no matter where you go, you're going to have a great time and you're going to meet some amazing people and learn tons. I absolutely love it down here in South Thames, but I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Where are you guys thinking of applying? Why? Leave a comment down below and if you had any specific queries as well, feel free to shoot me a question. If you found this useful, you may want to check out my guide to the UK Foundation Programme and everything you need to know. For my next video, I'm going to be releasing one on how you can apply and pick your foundation rotations and jobs. And shortly after that, just because I've had a few requests for this, the strategies that you can employ to get a foundation rotation and job in London. I'm trying to make content that is useful for you guys because I know that I was in a similar position not too long ago and it was stressful and I didn't know what I was doing and I'm really trying to get this out to as many of you guys as I can so I'd hugely appreciate if you liked, commented and subscribed down below and it helps the YouTube algorithm and feel free to share this with any friends that might find this useful as well. Cheers guys and I will see you in the next video.